fire. It's something humanity's had since time immemorial. It is the basis of caveman jokes. But for a really long time, we didn't really understand how things burned. For a long time, scientists believed in something called phlogiston. And the phlogiston theory of burning wasn't just a little bit wrong. It was completely and totally backward. Phlogiston, which comes from the Greek to inflame, was put forward by German chemist J.J. Bescher in 1663 and then further expanded by his student Georg Ernst Stahl in 1703. Basically, phlogiston is like this stuff that permeates the universe, like some kind of thermal midichlorians. It's like fire waiting to be. The idea of phlogiston comes from the four classical Greek elements that were put forward by Empedocles and championed by Aristotle. You know the one that says elements, there's only four of them, earth, fire, air and water. And, I mean, they're only off by 114 and counting. But if fire was an element, then there must be some kind of pre-fire just waiting to bring it into existence. And according to science, that stuff was phlogiston. Apparently, things were just full of the stuff. And when they were burned, it would release the phlogiston into the air, which the air could absorb, because air could do that for some reason. According to phlogiston theory, trees were just ash plus phlogiston. Forests were just ash piles waiting for a spark. So are people, for that matter. Things that had been burned were called dephlogisticated, and this video is mainly an excuse to say that word. Now, this isn't just wrong. It's the opposite of what actually happens. When things are burned, they don't give anything up. They combine with oxygen. But that wouldn't be known until the 1780s, and we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. The reason it was so hard to debunk phlogiston theory was it does account for a lot of the stuff we see around us. If air could only absorb so much phlogiston, then things in a sealed container would eventually saturate the air with stuff and would stop burning. And things do stop burning in sealed containers. And if breathing releases phlogiston, which was obviously something it did, if you couldn't release that phlogiston into the air, you couldn't breathe. And you would die. Which also happens if you seal people in containers, but I don't advise doing that. Air that has become too full of phlogiston was called phlogisticated air, which today we now call the far more boring carbon dioxide. And we know that if you put a fire in carbon dioxide, it will snuff it out. It'll also snuff out people if you put them in that, but again, don't do these things. We also know that things in sealed containers stop burning because there's only a finite amount of oxygen for them to combine with. And once they have combined with that oxygen, there's nothing left for them to combust with. It took a long, long time for phlogiston theory to actually be put to bed. The first big problem with it arose when people realised that things don't always get lighter when you burn them. A lot of things get heavier, which doesn't make sense if they're giving up phlogiston. A lot of scientists tried to get around this by saying phlogiston was lighter than air, but density measurements didn't support that. And others would say that it had negative mass, whatever that means. Maybe it's an insulting church service? It was French chemist Antoine Laurent Lavoisier who finally put the nails in phlogiston's coffin. In the 1780s, he decided to go after it. Hard. He built special containers with special seals to make them completely airtight. And in those, he put a lump of tin, which he then heated so hard that it formed a tin oxide around it, kind of like tin rust. First, he noted that it got heavier. And then when he opened the container, air rushed in, which meant there was something in the air that had been used up. Eventually, he decided that air had two components. One, which would support burning, which he called oxygen, which comes from the Greek acid maker. He thought oxygen was a component of all acids. It isn't, he was wrong, but the name stuck. And he thought there was another component that didn't support burning, which he called azote, which we now call nitrogen. That and other experiments put the phlogiston theory to bed and made way for Lavoisier's oxygen theory, which is what we still use. Because of this, among other breakthroughs, Lavoisier is known as the father of modern chemistry. Unfortunately, he was also a rich man in revolutionary France. It didn't end well for him and he was guillotined in 1794. But 
With phlogiston at least, he managed to completely reverse a totally accepted facet of science. Things don't give up something when they combust, they combine with oxygen. In talking about this, science wasn't just a bit wrong or in the need of modification, it was completely backwards. It's important to remember that we can always be driving in the complete opposite direction of right, but that no matter how far we've done that, we can always turn the car around and put ourselves on the right path. Thank you for watching Story of Science, where I like to tell interesting scientifical stories. If you enjoyed this one, please check out some of my other videos, like, share, subscribe, leave a comment down below, all the usual YouTuber jazz. Thanks so much, and I'll see you again soon.